Hello and welcome to Sports News Africa, the home of Africa's sporting conversation. In this edition, we'll look back at some of the big stories that made the headlines this past week. Here's what's coming up on the programme. Isaiah Kiplagat launched his bid for the IAAF vice presidency role. And Stephen Keshi calls for unity as he looks to the future with the Super Eagles. The outgoing president of Athletics Kenya, Isaiah Kiplagat, launched his bid to become the next vice president of the International Association of Athletics on Thursday. Kiplagat said fighting doping in the sport would be his top priority if elected this year. Isaiah Kiplagat is a man on a mission. After stepping down from his long-serving position as chairman of Athletics Kenya, he now has his sights set higher on becoming the International Association of Athletics Federation's IAAF vice president. Speaking during the launch of his manifesto at a Nairobi hotel in Kenya's capital, Nairobi, Kiplagat said that if elected, part of his agenda would be addressing doping. My mission is to ensure that this fight is eliminated, if not controlled in the world. Doping is an issue, and then in the Kenyan, Kenyan, Kenya continent and globally. We want to develop policies that will seek to reward the spirit of the sports and manship. So if you win as a clean athlete, we want to give you something better than those who win by using the drug. And make sure that if you have been banned at any one stage, you should not represent your country in any of the international events. Kiplagat also wants to reform at some events and focus on athletes' welfare and education. He aims to improve spectatorship by bringing in more shorter races that might have wider appeal. Athletics Kenya Vice Chair Lady Fatma Wale was also present at the launch and encouraged the government to support Kiplagat's bid, saying it would be beneficial to the country. She added the country's busy calendar was a good sign of positive direction. One thing to note that this year is a very busy calendar year. We will be heading to Colombia for our World Youth uh, event, which Kenya won a bid to host this event in 2017. Next, we'll be heading to Beijing, China, for our World Championship, and that is where the elections for the IAAF will take place. Also attending the launch was new chairman of Sports Kenya, Fred Miteti. He said Kiplagat's bid for an IAAF post was a clear indication that Kenya had matured in the sports arena, particularly athletics. This launch to Kenya, to us as Kenya, is that we have grown, we have matured in the sports arena, we can compete internationally. And uh, in most of the, the areas we have participated in international uh, sports, we have always done very well. The IAAF elections will be held during the IAAF Congress in Beijing, China in August. Nigerian national team coach Stephen Keshi wants a fresh start after signing a two-year deal to coach the Super Eagles. Speaking exclusively to Sports News Africa, Keshi, who was in London last week, said it was time for Nigerians to put aside their differences and work for the greater good of the team. Our communication level is very, very cordial now. Is is things are going well? which I, in the first place, that's what I want, because you can't do this thing yourself. You need, you need a collective of effort of everybody in the Federation, media, Nigerians, to work together. And, and I captained this squad for 14 years. I played a long time for this team. I know once we're together, you can't break Nigeria. It's very difficult for any team to, to beat Nigeria. And that's what, I, that's what I want. Once we, we team up together and with what is the, 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 the wisdom or the vision that is God now that he wants to put in place, I pray that it's in place. I, I pray that everybody is going to give it a try and give it a chance to work because our problem is that we sometimes have difficulty in um, changing, you know. We're a little bit more... I'm um, satisfied with that zone that we are 
We don't want to think about moving forward. What he's bringing in now is a good thing, but we just have to have patience for the stuff to materialize and, and take it from there. So um, his support is very, very important because if the team is doing well, he's doing well. Everybody's happy, Nigeria is happy, federal government is happy. So um, we just need to take ourselves along and, and uh, make sure things work out well. It's very important um, assignment that we've got now, knowing fully that uh, we didn't qualify the last couple of nations. Uh, so it's uh, the major task ahead of us. But we have to prepare, you know, we know it's, it's a challenge in front of us, but uh, the preparation level must be very critical, very important. So if we can get that done, because it's going to be the period of where the players are off season, and you know what that means when they're off season, you know, they go crazy, they, they want to enjoy themselves, and uh, which I understand. But this is where professionalism will come in and a lot of discipline. But um, it's going to be a challenging period, but we we work things out. Zambians have been left angered by the government's decision to hand responsibility for the commemoration of the plane disaster that killed the entire national football squad 22 years ago back to the victims' families. It is yet another blow to the families who are still waiting for the government to release the findings of the investigation into the tragedy. 22 years after the much-celebrated Zambian national football team was wiped out in a military plane crash, the Zambian government has told families of the deceased that the government will no longer be responsible for preserving their memory. Instead, families will have to cough up to ensure there is a commemoration each year. We commemorate with, with the families, but I think that uh, the memorial you know, uh, program and everything else has really been left in the hands of the families. Uh, it's not a, a government, uh, you know, responsibility anymore uh, because that's going to go on for years and, and I think that uh, uh, the government cannot, uh, you know, carry on doing it for years to come. A Zambian military plane carrying the players crashed into the Atlantic Ocean 500 meters from the shore soon after a refueling stop in Gabon while en route to a World Cup qualifier against Senegal. More than two decades later, the government has not responded to demands for a full report on the crash, leaving family and friends still struggling to come to terms with the tragic event. Soccer fan Geoffrey Ziambo feels that the government has a degree of responsibility and should not be washing its hands of the event or those involved. They died in service, so it's important that uh, they are remembered because they brought glory to Zambia and uh, they were the national team. And for the sake of uh, our records and our history as a country, and for those that are, were not there at that time, uh, it's important that such events are there so that they know exactly what happened uh, during that time. So government needs more involvement. The government has made efforts to compensate the families with some cash provided in 2002, but payment was not made in full. <laughs> and promises that a report into the crash would be released have gone unfulfilled. Early reports into the crash indicated human error after an engine fire. I think going the, you know, forward for, for uh, the spirits of those people who died in the Gaboya disaster, the government should simply release the report first and foremost and then um, give them the last uh, money, so to speak, so that the chapter could be closed. Government, however, has given assurances that the families will be looked after. We remember the families of, uh, you know, those um, that have been, uh, the, the families that have been left behind, and uh, we'll do everything possible as, as as government to make sure, you know, that um, um, uh, those that have remained, uh, you know, their lives are comfortable. The tragedy of the crash was remembered by most of the country when Zambia won the Africa Cup of Nations in 2012 and again on the 20th anniversary of the crash in 2013. But with government walking away, a potent national symbol may now be left to drift into obscurity. You're watching Sports News Africa. 
Nigeria and Watford striker Odia Nigalu has said it's a dream come true to play in the English Premier League after his club side Watford were promoted last weekend. Speaking exclusively to Sports News Africa, Iglahu also said he was looking forward to playing at some of the most iconic stadia in Europe. I'm very happy because this is one of my, my dream, you know, to be in the Premier League, to play in the Premier League. So I didn't come to Watford to come and play in the Championship. I came to Watford because I see they have a good team and the management, Pozo, the, the owner of the team. I know what his, his ambition was. That's why I came here because I know the team have every opportunity to go to the Premier League because since when Pozo took over the team, I've been following the team even when I was playing in, in the Spanish League. So I think... That's one of my decisions. I'm very happy that I came here, yeah, everything worked out, and in God's favor, we, uh, we get a ticket to the Premier League. When I was back there in Nigeria, everybody in Nigeria watched Premier League. In Africa, everybody watched Premier League. And when we played against Chelsea, the FA Cup there, when I went to Stamford Bridge, I saw the atmosphere in the stadium. I said, no, God, I want to be among this. I want to be in this kind of stadium. And I was doing interview after the game that day. I say, by the grace of God, I know hope next season we'll be playing in this stadium. And with God, all things are possible. I'm very happy that uh, uh, we got the promotion ticket because the atmosphere that day was incredible in, the, in the, the game against Chelsea. So I want to experience something like that. I've experienced that in Spain, in Italy. I want to experience that in England. So I'm happy I have every opportunity to do that now. Since I was young back in Nigeria, it's only about Premier League. Premier League, we've been watching. I've been supporting Manchester United since when I was young, watching them at the, and the cold, Dwight York, the score and all that. So, so it, it, it's really good, you know. I was, when I, even when I travel to do, I say one day I want to play in this league to get here to feel how it is, you know. And this opportunity for me, I'm going to grab it with two one. I will go there and give all my best, you know. I know it's not going to be easy. It will take me time to to get used to it because it's Premier League and Champions is two different games. It's not that hard. You're going to play against big teams like Chelsea, like Man City, like Liverpool, like Tottenham. All those big teams. It's not going to be easy against them. But you have to give your best. That's you have to show how how good you are. I think I'm going to give my best and do everything I'm possible for, for us to win games and keep this team in Premier League. The Ghana Football Association has given the Black Stars the green light to participate in the Council of Southern African Football Association's Cup in South Africa, which begins on May 17th. The GFA had previously been reluctant to commit to the tournament following the xenophobic attacks in South Africa. Ghana Black Stars will participate in the Council of Southern Africa Football Association's Kosafa Cup in South Africa, the Ghana Football Association GFA has confirmed. Concerns had cropped up on whether the tournament would still go ahead after South Africa was rocked by xenophobic attacks on foreigners living and working in the country. Sunny Diara, communications director of the GFA, said the South African government had assured foreigners of safety. The Black Stars will travel to South Africa to play in the Kosafa Games, um, cognizant of the fact that um, the xenophobia attacks had happened in the past. I think that the South African government have made moves um, to assure foreigners in the country and also visitors who are coming in the country that they will do everything in their means to ensure that they are not attacked. In April, armed locals began attacking immigrants, looting their shops and even killing them, claiming that foreign nationals were taking their jobs. Tensions between Ghana and South Africa worsened after unconfirmed reports linked some deaths of Ghanaians in South Africa to the recent spate of xenophobic attacks. The South African government, in a quick rejoinder, stated that the deaths were unrelated to the attacks. Diara said that participation in the tournament would create a platform to show the world that Africans are standing together in solidarity. We hope that we can also use the opportunity to show how united Africa is and that um, the, the people who are perpetrating or masterminding the xenophobia attacks on other Africans in Africa are in the tiny minority. And by doing this and by partaking in the tournament, we are isolating them and exposing them. The tournament is an opportunity for the Black Stars to play together ahead of important games later in the year.
Wrestling enthusiasts converged on Bobo Diolasso in Burkina Faso to watch the National Wrestling Championships. Traditional or Greco-Roman wrestling is among the top four major sports in Burkina Faso and is also popular in Niger, Senegal, Northern Nigeria and the Gambia. A young, shirtless, well-built man dances to work up the already excited crowd. The audience is exhilarated and eagerly anticipating the latest wrestling tournament about to begin in the city of Bobo Diulasso in Burkina Faso. The championship is being hosted through the Burkina Faso Fighting Federation in a bid to resuscitate traditional wrestling in the country. Bon, je as for Bukinabi wrestling, we are really on a progressive track that we intend to stay on with the new federation. When you see our championship level, our progress will start to rise. According to the Burkina Faso Fighting Federation President Pierre Badiel, competitions are held around the country to select the finalists who will take part in the national championships. We have competition in all provinces and it's the best who are chosen for the highlight. That is the national championship. We have to hold the championship at a specific time because it will soon be winter and a lot of our participants are from rural areas. Burkina Faso has always been a force to reckon with in traditional wrestling. In 2012, they made it to the finals of the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS Games. Poor management has, however, seen the sport decline in recent years. As it now struggles to find its footing again, wrestlers are demanding more practice time. Il faut plus de préparation. We need more preparation, and when we say preparation, we should work in a systematic way. The wrestlers should not only learn at work and meet up to have fun afterwards. It shouldn't be like that. There should be people like technicians that can accompany them. I believe with this, wrestling will go further. Federation President Badiel says that with enough resources, Burkina Faso can be African champions. It's an ambition. Eh? It's an ambition. It happens during the African Championships. We already have African champions. This means we can win against the Senegalese. If we had the same means as Senegal, we will make the same champions. It is hoped that sponsorship for the sport and improved management will get the country's wrestling back on form and champions in Africa. And that's the end of Sports News Africa for today. Join us again on Monday when we will bring you all the latest from Africa and around the world. Bye for now.